the most famous paintings of Caspar David Friedrich. In this video, we will see Friedrich's most famous works. The German artist of the Romanticism movement, most famous in the entire history of art. Wanderer Above the Sea, A Fog Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1818 In Romanticism, it became very fashionable to paint landscapes. Landscapes that show the forces of nature, storms, fog, wind, rain, snow. It was what these guys called the sublime, and I wanted to be a reflection of what the artist felt inside, how to show emotions, and the more extreme, the better. An interior and exterior landscape. Friedrich was one of the gurus of this concept of the sublime. Here we see the typical guy with his back to the artist, surely with a hallucinated face, when contemplating the mountainous landscape, covered in mist. The painter was probably right to eliminate the horizon line by blending it with the sky. This gives a feeling of greater immensity. Although in reality, it may be that Friedrich painted so many people from behind, because, they say, the artist did not draw people particularly well. The fact is that this allows us both to identify with this walker and not to take away the prominence of the landscape. This painting by Friedrich is, in short, the paradigm of the great romantic idea, that moment in which man feels overwhelmed by beauty, natural or spiritual. The Sea of Ice artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1824. A ship shows its stern in the middle of a broken ice sheet in the middle of the Arctic Ocean glacier. The ice fragments rise to the sky, becoming a kind of funerary monolith. HMS Griper was one of the ships that participated in William Edward Perry's expeditions to the North Pole to find the Northwest Passage. Friedrich was an expert in representing through landscape the great struggles of nature with its worst enemy, man, and with this one in particular he inaugurated a new genre, the Arctic Sublime, which hit quite hard. Romanticism was nourished by epic and tragic stories like this one, set in distant or unpublished places and shown through a prism of introspection and individualism. The human being is devoured by the force of nature, and here we hardly see even their trace. You have to strain to see the ship. Rather, it is everything is quiet and lonely, frozen. Not even the wound in the ice seems to have done much damage, compared to the icebergs seen in this sublime landscape that form a kind of castle frozen in time. It is known that Friedrich had an accident in his childhood related to ice. When he was seven years old, walking on a frozen lake, the ice broke under his feet. His older brother Johann Christopher rushed to his aid, but was drowned, sacrificing his life for the future painter. Friedrich could never get over the event and the guilt followed him all his life. Since then, nature has been a source of inspiration, fear and respect. Cross on the Mountains Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1808 when you get intense in German, the romance is magnified. A perfect example is that of Friedrich, who with his mountainous landscapes of mists, storms and sunrises knew how to translate his feelings onto canvas. So to speak, his landscapes are like self-portraits of his soul. This particular landscape also has the plus of spirituality. It is practically a religious painting, and it is very rare that a landscape can be placed in a church without clashing, as is the case. Friedrich was able to sacralize the landscape. Countess Teresa von Brühl and her boyfriend, Count Franz von Hohenstein, went crazy when they saw this painting by Friedrich and asked him for an identical copy to place in their castle chapel. And oddly enough, the work had its controversy, after all, the young romantic artist wanted to question the legitimacy of landscape traditions and place their political, philosophical, literary and theological ideas between mountains and pine trees, thus playing with the meaning of the play. In this spiritual landscape, we see a mountain with fir trees and a cross on the top. Three supernatural lights come out of the place. Is it the sun that goes down? Or is it rather something more mystical? Each one draw their conclusions.
The Stages of Life. Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1835. The Stages of Life was painted about five years before the death of the German artist who opened the doors of Romanticism in his country. This painting, like many other works by Friedrich, is a reflection on his own mortality and the transience of life. We see a beach in a summer sunset and the typical character with his back to the author. The guy is walking towards what looks like a family. But the title of the painting gives us the allegorical key, those people on the shore represent the three moments in life, childhood, youth and old age. The five figures echo five ships, each at a different distance from the shore, alluding to the nearness of death. If we look closely, the protagonist is about to board the sailboat, so we can describe this work as a premonitory painting. If you look closely, one of the children has a Swedish flag. This is because Friedrich was a guy born in Greifswald, who belonged to Swedish Pomerania and whose beach is represented here. The artist had great sympathy for everything Swedish. In fact, it was usual for Friedrich to invent landscapes and here he preferred to show this real territory to show his last and ambitious great work. The Abbey in the Oakwood Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1809 Talking about death has never been easy, that is why handling it is so different for each person, some prefer to ignore it, others talk about it and in the case of Caspar David Friedrich, paint it. Abbey in a Forest, also known as Abbey in the Oak Grove, is one of the painter's first works where the romantic trend can be appreciated. The choice of themes such as desolation, loneliness and melancholy go hand in hand with nature and the passing of the seasons. This work portrays the ruins of a Gothic abbey where a retinue of monks carry a coffin, as would be seen in the rest of his paintings, Caspar David Friedrich does not mark a limit of space, this being blurred with fog and the extension of the same landscape. At first glance it might seem like a work that only portrays the pain after a loss, however, the light from the upper area becomes the leading element and reminds us that there is something that beats all earthly evil, faith. With the landscape bathed in intense light, Friedrich portrays the kingdom of heaven and the promise of and beyond. Man can do nothing but contemplate the magnitude of nature and trust that promise. The landscape manages to portray a situation as real and symbolic as it becomes a landscape as unique as each one of us can feel things. Winter Landscape Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1811 Friedrich paints, although it may not seem like it, a religious painting, since he was into pantheism, which is that God is everywhere, and this, above all, is demonstrated when contemplating nature. If so, no temples or churches are needed. God can be found in snowy landscapes like this. The fir trees in the image are equivalent to the spears of a Gothic cathedral. If we sharpen our eyes a little, we see a cross among the trees, and a man praying leaning on some stones. He must have had problems with his legs, because he left his crutches lying in the snow. Things don't look good, the guy may be about to freeze to death. But for some reason, this painting gives a feeling of calm, of serenity, even looking at all that cold snow. For Friedrich Snow was like something close to death. Winter, by preceding spring, the rebirth of nature, would symbolize the Christian idea of resurrection. The fir trees, perennial trees that endure everything, were for Friedrich the Eternal, a symbol of Christian hope. Or leaving aside any religious interpretation, this landscape is quite a Christmas postcard. Snow, calm, serenity, spirituality, peace. It even seems to give off a little heat, don't you think? Window Looking Over the Park Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1811 Painting a closed window can serve as a framing device, a symbol of confinement or longing, or even a metaphor for the painting itself, a false illusion of 2D mimicking 3D. 
A window is transparency. It is what fuses the private and the public. It is the source of light in a house, and spiritually light can have as many and as high meanings as we want to give it. A window is also the passage between inside and outside. It is not a door or a wall, so it is not a physical transition, but a mental one. Looking through a window from an interior evokes many things. We may look outward, but it may make us look inward. If we look out the window, we are somehow already somewhere else, or maybe we wish we were. It is understandable why Friedrich sometimes drew interiors. Serene drawings without storms, clouds, shipwrecks, or sunsets. Things like a simple window to the park. Or not so simple, let's remember that romantic estrangement, that idea that forces us to perceive things differently, puts them in front of your eyes as if we had seen them before. There is something romantic in this painting. Given the hundreds of meanings it can have, a window is romantic. Friedrich puts us in that room and makes us look outside and think. Friedrich makes a contrast between interior and exterior. Inside everything is rectilinear, rational, symmetrical. Then we have a transition, with those plants in the pots, like domesticated beings. Outside, life is wild, even on a peaceful day like this. Nature grows beautiful and free, at different heights, in different ways, but as a whole, everything is beautiful. Top Cliffs on Ruggen. Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1818. The romantic, that melancholic, nostalgic individual, sensitive to drama and always, always facing the infinite, found in the work of Caspar David Friedrich one of his best mirrors. Romanticism had triumphed in Germany at the beginning of the 19th century, closely linked to Germanic nationalism, of which Friedrich was a frantic champion. After the Napoleonic Wars, a nationalist fever swept Europe, and all the nations that constituted it claimed their unique personality and their right to self-determination. The Romantic movement, so inclined to express feelings with a highly exaggerated language, idealistic, dreamlike at times, represented a perfect vehicle for this purpose. In 1818 Friedrich had married Caroline Bomber, a bourgeois girl 19 years his junior. It is a mysterious episode in the painter's life, since Friedrich was known for his love of solitude, silence, meditation, and also for his sullen and somewhat irascible character. Caroline's eruption into such a hermit life probably meant a considerable swing, but in light of her works, it seems that the young woman had a positive influence on her melancholy character. Indeed, from their link, the female figure becomes key in his paintings. The painting at hand was painted on the date of their wedding trip, which took them to the shores of the Baltic Sea. It is a work for intimate and family use, since there is evidence that Friedrich never exhibited it. Almost without a doubt, the characters represented on the canvas are the author himself, his wife Caroline and his brother, Christian, who accompanied them on the trip. What is not so clear is which of the men portrayed is Friedrich, the most plausible is that it is the figure that is standing, a little away from the group, who contemplates the sea that opens before them. This man is dressed in the traditional German manner, which reinforces the idea that it is a self-portrait of the author. The landscape, as usual in his works, does not faithfully represent reality. No, Friedrich was not a landscape painter, at least not in the strict sense of the term. Nature was for him a vehicle for the expression of a transcendent reality. Thus, through the sea, the trees, the evening light, the ruins of an old monastery, the artist speaks to us about God, the soul, life, and death. Each of the elements that appear in his paintings are much more than they appear, and cease to be finite matter to become dust of the sublime, a pure expression of God. The Romantics were like that. Unlike other paintings by the painter, Cliffs of Ruggen seems to exude more optimism, more vitality, more love of life. Perhaps it is Caroline's positive influence that fills the canvas with such diaphanous and soft light. In any case, we find recurring Friedrichian symbols, the sea, distant, enormous, unattainable, like that god who awaits us after death, the sailing ships, perhaps representations of the souls of men who depart towards the eternal, the anonymous characters, with their backs to the viewer, who are Caroline, Christian and Friedrich, but who could well be you and me.
Easter Morning Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1835 What does Caspar David Friedrich want to tell us with this painting? An artist like him, who always handled symbolism as a tool to express emotions, desires or thoughts, wanted to show us in this exquisite oil on canvas some other ideas about death and resurrection. The title itself already gives us a clue as to where the shots were going, Easter, that time before spring, prior in many aspects to the resurrection, days that are governed by the moons like the one that still refuses to leave the sky on top. Another clue in the title, the morning and its cold light, which begins to illuminate the sky, bringing hope of a new day, also a form of resurrection. Pure and hard romanticism, created by one of the main introducers of this movement in Germany and an expert in allegorical landscapes, be they stormy skies or morning mists like this one. Landscapes that connect in an almost magical way with our most emotional being. Still dark, figures almost certainly female, are heading to what looks like a cemetery. They go along a path surrounded by leafless trees and are divided into three different groups. They all go in silence, almost with their backs to us and seem to start a kind of parade that invites us to join. The set seems to give us a strange tranquility. It exudes life and hope. It was painted before a stroke ended the career of this extraordinary painter. Woman on the Stairs Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1825 This is Caroline, Friedrich's wife. She was 23 when she became engaged to the painter, who had finally been made a member of the Dresden Academy in December 1816 and was thus able to receive a salary of 150 thalers and afford a family. Friedrich was 42 years old. From the first moment, Caroline played the role of a devoted and loving wife, radically changing and overly sullen Friedrich. At that time, the romantic was practically mentally retarded when it comes to social relationships and it was Caroline who was in charge of regaining friendships that Friedrich neglected, reconnecting the artist with his family or things as basic as making him have breakfast with someone at desk. Friedrich gained in social health, but lost freedoms, something that hurts a romantic more than anyone. He could no longer, for example, take his inexplicable night walks. Now he had to check everything with Caroline. That if. When Friedrich painted, he did not want anyone to bother him. Caroline understood this perfectly, she accepted the painter's need for solitude to paint works in which, strangely enough, his wife began to appear often either as a model in the domestic environment, or looking out the window, or blurred by candlelight. Or as in this case, climbing a ladder. Poor Caroline used to climb that staircase every night, leaving her husband working, and that's how the romantic paints her, as if it were one of his sublime landscapes. It seems that Caroline climbs a mountain and goes to an almost religious light. Friedrich stayed downstairs in the dark, peering into his increasingly confused thoughts. A Friedrich who suffered more and more attacks of melancholy, paranoia, and even excessive severity and even violence against her and her children. Friedrich had become a paranoid old man who had developed certain ideas that began to completely undermine his domestic existence. Sometimes he suspected that Caroline was unfaithful to him, the old bastard, the one with the sublime peaks, the twilight forests, and the romantic ruins. Caroline, who climbed that narrow and gloomy staircase every night, could not be more faithful. I guess I knew that talented people are difficult, and very talented people are very difficult. And Friedrich was very talented, as can be seen in his landscapes, both exterior and interior. The Dreamer Artwork by Caspar David Friedrich from the year 1835 Made in 1835, The Dreamer is one of the last paintings by Friedrich, the painter who introduced Romanticism, to Germany. The painting shows a solitary character who could well be the same person depicted walking on a sea of clouds sitting in the middle of the ruins of the Eubin Monastery. The German painter enjoyed placing the dwarfed human being in front of vast landscapes, to better represent his fragility. 
Thus, the man we observe is plunged into the most absolute solitude, meditating on an unknown and inscrutable future. Similar to other works by the artist, the mixture of nature, twilight and gothic architecture represents a worthy contrast to the artist's mind, he always suffered from depression and many other mental disorders. The ruins give us a sense of nostalgia and take us back to the past, while nature, one of Friedrich's greatest interests, gives us light and vitality. This disparity in Friedrich's landscapes reflects Caspar's lonely and melancholy spirit, along with his stormy inner landscape. In part, it could be said that the work conveys the idea that nature survives any concept created by man, in this case the church. How fragile everything created by human beings becomes, right? The German artist manages to convey a mysticism through the colors and the twilight light that floods the entire canvas. Art becomes the means of expression of the inner world of the artist and of his communion with nature. Friedrich considered that through the contemplation of nature a dialogue with God could be established and, in this way, managed to alleviate the state of anguish to which man is subjected in the face of the uncertainty of an unknown destiny. That was all for today's video, tell us what you thought, and if you liked it, please give us your subscription and your like, this way you support the art community on YouTube. Until the next video, have a nice day.